Hi friends, I'm Bjorlin. Welcome to MyTechBits.com, a collection of my technical bits and pieces of information, online tools, calculators, and converters. You are now watching MyTechBit.com's video session. In this session, we'll see about SQL Server Management Studio and how to connect to SQL Server instance using Management Studio. I split the session into two parts. In the first part, we'll see about SSMS, then how to log into SQL Server Management Studio, how to connect to SQL Server, about Object Explorer window and how to use it, about Object Explorer details window and properties window. In part two, we'll see about SQL Server editor window, changing windows layout, some editing tools, registered servers and about template solutions and scripting projects. SSMS is a short form of SQL Server Management Studio. Management Studio is not a database, it's just a client application or a user interface to connect to the SQL Server installed in a local PC or on a server on a network. Using SSMS, we can configure, manage and administer the SQL Server components like database, reporting services, analysis services, SQL Server agent, etc. This is a diagrammatic representation of how the SQL Server Management Studio can connect to the SQL Server. In the right side of the diagram, in the personal computer, both the SQL Server and the Management Studio are installed together. The SSMS in the PC can connect to the local uh, SQL Server directly. This is a straightforward way. Normally, this will be the case for a freelance developer or someone who is trying to learn SQL Server as a beginner. This will not be the case in a big company or an organization or in a production environment. In companies, SQL Server will be normally installed on a data server. The data server can be connected through the network. For example, in the left side of the diagram, the laptop and the workstations are connected to the SQL Server in a network. The laptop and the workstation has SQL Server Management Studio installed in them. The developer can launch the SSMS from the laptop and connect to the SQL Server instance using the server's IP or name. The Management Studio can also connect to the SQL Server through internet, provided the SQL Server has a static IP or a registered domain name. Now we will practically see how to launch the Management Studio and use it. To launch SSMS, go to Start. I am using Windows 10. In Windows 10, go to Start icon and then to All Apps. In All Apps, scroll down and find Microsoft SQL Server 2014 folder. Under Microsoft SQL Server 2014 folder, look for SQL Server 2014 Management Studio and then click. The login screen of Management Studio will appear. The first field in the login window is the server type. There are four server types. The database engine, which has a database and other database components. The analysis services, which is used in decision support and business analytics. Reporting services, which is used for generating user-friendly reports. Integration services, which is used for building enterprise-level data integration and data transformation solutions. As we are dealing with database now, I will select the server type as database engine. The second field is the server. In the server field, we have to enter the name or the IP address of the server. If there is a named instance, then we have to specify the instance name after the slash. Let me tell you what the instance means. A SQL Server instance is a complete SQL Server. You can install more than one instance. I mean, more than one SQL Server on a machine or PC. Only one of them will be the default instance with just the name of the server or PC. The other instances are called named instances. The named instances need to be specified with the instance name along with the server or PC's name. Here, Mac Windows is a server name and MS SQL Server 2 is the instance name. In case if the SQL Server is in the same machine along with the SSMS, then you can just enter a dot to connect to the default local instance of the SQL Server. Another option is to enter local in opening and closing brackets.
Even though MySQL Server is installed in this PC, I am entering the PC's name followed by a slash and the instance name. This is because I have more than one instance of SQL Server in my PC. The next field is the authentication type. There are two types of authentication, the Windows authentication and the SQL Server authentication. If you select Windows authentication, then the login process will use the current logged in Windows user credentials. If you select SQL Server authentication, then you have to enter the SQL Server login password. If this is a fresh installation of SQL Server, then log in with the username SA and password you have provided during the SQL Server installation. The last and the optional field is remember password. If you have to frequently use SSMS in your secure PC or workstation, then use the remember password option. Finally, press the connect button to connect to the SQL Server database engine. Now you are logged into the management studio and connected to the SQL Server database engine you have entered during the login process. The management studio user interface is divided into two major panels the object explorer window and the documents window. The panel you are seeing in the left side is the object explorer. Object explorer lists down all the connected servers, the database, and other uh, database objects and SQL Server agent in Tree Searcher. The objects other than database you can see in this window are security and logins, roles and credentials, etc. In the management section, you can see the database management objects like the maintenance plan, backup manager, SQL Server logs, etc. In the SQL Server Agent section, you can see the SQL jobs, alerts, and error logs. After logging to SSMS, if you want to connect to another server, press the connect icon at the top of the object explorer window. The SSMS login window will pop up. In the login window, type in the other SQL server name, provide the authentication details and press connect. Now the SQL server will be connected and added to the tree view in the object explorer. If you want to remove the SQL server from the object explorer window, Select the SQL Server you want to remove and press the disconnect icon. The disconnect icon is next to the connect icon. On disconnecting, the SQL Server will disappear from the tree view. The Documents window panel is the most important part of Management Studio. It shows the Object Explorer Details window, SQL Editor, Browser window, etc. The Object Explorer Details window, as the name suggests, will show the details of the object you select in the Object Explorer. To open Object Explorer Details window, go to the View menu and select Object Explorer Details. The Details window will open in the panel right to the Object Explorer. This window will show the details of the object you are selecting in the Object Explorer. Most of the details displayed in the details window is also available in the properties pop-up screen. To launch the properties screen, select an object, right click, from the right click menu, select properties. With this, I am completing the part 1 of the SQL Server Management Studio session. In the next session, we will have the part 2 of the Management Studio. In part 2, we will see about SQL Server Editor window, changing windows layout, some editing tools, registered servers, and about template solutions and scripting projects. If you like this video session, do subscribe my channel and share it with your friends. Also join us in social networks like Facebook and Google+.
For more technical articles, online tools, calculators, and converters, check out my website mytechbits.com. M Y T E C B I T S dot com. See you again with some more interesting technical sessions. Until then, bye bye.